katika nyika kavu kaskazini mwa Kenya ni kito kisichoweza kufidika. First time that I saw Lake Turkana, I just saw out of this hot desert, this glistening blue, literally an ocean in the desert. That lake is the largest desert lake in the world. It's this huge expanse of water, nearly 260 kilometers long, 30 kilometers wide, an average of 30 meters deep. There's a lot of water there. It's a source of drinking water. It also supports the fisheries, tourism. We also regard it as a laboratory for research. Lakini hivi sasa ziwa hili lipo hatarini kubwa. The Ethiopian government's been embarking on these incredibly ambitious development schemes, quite often funded by international donors. In 2011, then Prime Minister Meles Zenawi announced a massive transformation of the Omo Valley. It was going to become this industrial powerhouse. So he proposed a cascade of dams, some of Africa's largest dams, and at the time, 200,000 hectares of sugar plantations uh, irrigated by waters from the Omo River. 90% of the water in Lake Turkana comes from the Omo River. So if the Omo River ceases to be a major source of, uh, of, of input for Lake Turkana, the potential is that Lake Turkana could dry up. Nchi ya Kenya itakuwa mteja mkuu wa umeme wa nguvu za maji unaozalishwa na jibwawa jipya zaidi GB3 ambalo limekwisha kujengwa na linaloendelea kujaa maji. Iwapo miradi hii itaendelea bila ya kuzuiliwa, wanasayansi wanasema kwamba ziwa Turkana litapungua kwa kilomita 80 kwa urefu na mita 44 kwa kina na kunyauka na kusalia kuwa vidimbo viwili vidogo. It's often quite surprising to us how little is known about these these issues that is going to destroy the livelihoods of 300,000 Kenyans. Wadasa na chini baadhi ya wengi walio katika hatari iwapo ziwa hili litanyauka. Zamani walikuwa wafugaji wa mbuzi na ngombe kutoka Ethiopia, lakini kwa muda wa karne kadhaa wamehama kusini na kuingia nchini Kenya wakiendeshwa na kiangazi na wingi wa idadi ya watu. Kiko na watoto wengi. Unajua tunasemanga tunasaa kama kama samaki vile inasaa. Huyu ni Mike, mvuvi mdasa na kutoka Selichu, anayewalisha watoto kumi na wawili na wake watatu kwa vuo lake. Unaona hii inakuwa soft kwa sababu ya maji ya chumvi. Wadasa na hapo awali hawakupendelea samaki waliwahi kuichukia harufu yake na kuwachukulia wavuvi wote kuwa watu wa tabaka la chini. Awali nimeanza uvuvi mama wangu huyu mzee hapa ambao kwa hiyo nyumba. Alikuwa atushikili sana. Nasema mimi ninuka samaki na nakula kitu ambao ni kinyume ya ya dasna. Viangazi vya kila mara wingi wa idadi ya watu na uhaba wa ardhi ina maana ya kuwa ufugaji kwa kiasi kikubwa sio riziki ya kutegemewa mifugo ni fulani lakini sina interest naye kabisa wale wafugaji asubuhi anaenda anafuata mali yake anachunga cha usiku mtu anaenda bahari wanafua hata wameona ngombe na mbusi sio muhimu samaki ndio muhimu sisi tunafua tunakuja kuuza Wa wow, watu wafanye biashara after watu sasa wanapeleka wanaenda wanauza Mtu akuja kuuza samaki akipata pesa anakuja ananunua nyama hii ni 250 hii ni 250 hii ni 400 400 Mama yangu ambaye alikuwa ananipiga wakati huo 
Yeye ndio saa hii bila kukula samaki siku mbili. Hao akina mama wanawake wangu watakuwa kwa shida. Paka wanda atafuta samaki mahali hapo. Katika jamii hizi anzilishi na za mpakani, watu wengi hawana namna ya kupata habari kwenye runinga au hata magazeti na viwango vya uwezo wa kusoma na kuandika ni kati ya vilivyo chini zaidi nchini Kenya. Maisha habari inaendelea kwa ngumu na hatujui sababu ni nini hata sahi tukienda around hawana habari kabisa. Miaka kumi iliyopita ujenzi wa bwawa la Gibetri ulianza lakini kabla ya kuchunguza athari ya mradi huo hatimaye nchi ya Ethiopia iliyopofanya uchunguzi wa athari ya mradi huo kwa mazingira na jamii haikuchunguza athari ambazo zingetokea nchini Kenya hasa kutokana na mashamba yenyewe Meneja wa shirika la mamlaka ya ulinzi wa mazingira ya Ethiopia alisema kwamba ukosoaji wa ujenzi wa bwawa hilo ulikuwa kwa misingi ya kukosa maarifa tu. Shirika la nguvu za umeme la Ethiopia lilipiga hatua na kufanya mkataba na kampuni ya Italia Salin Constructori kulijenga bwawa hilo. Wahamasishaji nchini wamekuwa wakishawishi bwawa la Gibetri lisijengwe tangu mwaka wa 2009. Friends of Lake Turkana, shirika lisilo la kiserikali, hata liliwahi kushinda kesi kortini dhidi ya shirika la serikali ya Kenya la usambazishaji umeme Ketrako, lililoamrishwa kuweka wazi kwa umma makubaliano yake na Ethiopia na kufanya makadirio huru ya athari kwa mazingira. Hamna kati ya hati hizi zilizotolewa hadi leo. In 2009, the African Development Bank commissioned me to carry out a hydrological study of the lake and they were aware that actually none of the studies that have been done to date had even considered Kenya. Kabla ya uchunguzi kukamilika hata hivyo, benki ya Uchina ya viwanda na biashara iliingilia kati na kuugharamia mradi huo tatanishi. Gb3 it doesn't consume water. What it does is it captures the water, it stores it and then it releases it in a controlled fashion. It became very obvious that the Gb3 dam would impound the water that's flowing down the river to fill its reservoir. If you take that water out of the system, the lake must fall. So my study showed that the lake would fall two meters as a consequence of just the filling of the Gibi Tree Reservoir. Sasa yote mpaka ndani ya hizo mukoma wa underwater. Since December last year, all this water has disappeared. So you can see, imagine how much water has been lost. The Lake Turkana system is a natural hydrological system which responds to floods. The fisheries breeding is triggered by floods. Mvua huanza kunyesha kusini mwa Ethiopia katikati ya mwezi wa Mei na kuujaza mto Omo pamoja na kulifurika ziwa Turkana kufikia mwezi wa Agosti. During the filling period of last year, it had been planned to release an artificial flood to compensate for the lack of the natural floods that would occur. That did not happen. It wasn't released. If you remove those floods, if you stop that flow of nutrients into the lake, you will affect the ecology and the fisheries of the lake. Fish breeds in all that area. So when this area is underwater, there's a lot of fishing activities. This area becomes a bustling village, full of activities. Vehicles come, refrigerated trucks, vehicles collecting dry fish. The active fishing takes place here. So we have lost all this fishing. If you look at the lake now, you see one boat there, another boat there, another boat there. That means even the fishing capacity is still low. All this was water. Fish was breeding here, and now since the water is gone, there's no fish in this area. Mm. 
We know from past studies and studies in other African lakes that a fall in lake level is always associated with a decline in fisheries. So there will have been impacts already. If you talk to fishermen around the lake, they will confirm to you that fisheries catches have diminished. Sasa kama ingekuwa inapata mapato samaki ya kutosha, hiyo samaki kama sasa hivi tumepata samaki mbili, hiyo ni tuseme ni kama 8 8 shilingi. Sasa mtu anapeleka nyumbani shilingi 80. Kalakia, <laughs> Okay, what be a the fisheries level of Lake Turkana is currently underexploited. In market centers, there's always areas reserved for Lake Turkana fish. Many Kenyans know Lake Turkana fish has got a unique taste. Especially for sun-dried fish, people wait for it on market day from Lake Turkana so that they can buy and sell. It's known all over. The non-salted type has market ready market within Kenya. Ketale, Kisumu, Malaba. So the salted ones has a ready market at the Democratic Republic of Congo. Kemfri inadai kwamba vuo la Turkana laweza kuwa zaidi ya mara sita ya vuo la hivi leo, lakini wanasayansi wengine wanatahadharisha kwamba kwa kuwa kiunga mwana chazi wa Turkana sasa kimekatwa, uvuvi huenda ukawa tendo lililoshindwa. Lakini mna hazina nyinginezo zilizofichika kaskazini mwa Kenya. Kaunti za Turkana na Marsabit zina mandhari mazuri mno ambayo yamataliwa nadra sana na wakenya wengine. Seuze wageni isipokuwa wale wanaosaka kudhubutu matukio ya kiajabu ajabu. I've been visiting Turkana out of interest for over 40 years. It's a fascinating area, incredibly diverse. Ni wachache ambao wako na idea hii mambo ya wageni huku Lake Turkana. Unajua mgeni wakati anakuja hako na lengo fulani. Lazima utapute sehemu kwa mfano Central Island. Najua ni kileta wageni pale mambo ya samaki wataona. Ndege flamingos, crocodiles pale kwa kretas. Hii kazi na nipatia pesa ili usaidia familia, usaidia wale wengine wanakudependa upon. Wale ni pelicans. Hawa isa ni uh, seagull. They migrate from here to England, back from England to Electrocana. Mbuga tatu za kitaifa msibiloi, kisiwa chakati na kisiwa chakusini, zapatikana katika ziwa Turkana. Chimbuko la binadamu la patikana ufkatika mbuga ya kitaifa ya sibiloi. Nchini Kenya mna baadhi ya viunzi vya mifupa vya zamani zaidi, 
na mafuvu kamili zaidi ya binadamu ya tangu mamilioni ya miaka iliyopita. Lakini utalii ulivyo hapa ni kivuli tu ikilinganishwa na unavyoweza kuwa. Kusafiri kwa ndege au mashua kunazuiza kigarama na ni vigumu kufika hapa kwa barabara. Well in 1972 and because there had been no people in the area for many many years the wildlife population was extraordinary we had um, giraffe we had gravy zebra rhino buffalo and 50 years before there had been elephant and frankly it's not a place i would think is worth visiting as a national park today so the wildlife is gone very few left There is not enough grazing land in the deserts of Kenya because of the population explosion. And so anyone who's got stock likes to go to a national park because usually there's more grass because the animals don't eat it all. The reason Sibiloi is important as a national park is it could attract as, almost as many tourists as the Maasai Mara. What you can do and see there if we got the wildlife reinstated and we opened up those museum sites on human origin could be the, probably the most important Kenyan destination. You have to build hotels, build lodges, build the roads. But nobody else in the world can offer something that could compete. Uwezo mkubwa wa kiutalii wa Ziwa Turkana hautawahi kufikiwa iwapo Kenya itakubalisha maji haya kukauka bure tu. The shallow areas of Lake Turkana, those are the areas that are first going to be dried up. You know, the islands would be, no longer be islands. The fossil sites will always be there. Fossil sites love dry climate. It will only be known for the fossils, nothing else. And that, I think, is a terrible tragedy. Jamii ambayo tayari imekwisha tengwa pembeni itabobea zaidi kwenye umaskini. Njaa na mzozano utazidi na mamia ya maelfu ya watu watalazimika kuhama. If you look at the Turkana who are in, in northern Kenya and the Dasanach who are one of the, the, the tribes that are immediately over the border, there's a long history of, of insecurity, of cattle raiding. The Dasanach areas in Ethiopia, their grazing land is being taken for different, sort, different types of industrial plantations and their access to the Omo River is being restricted, which means they really have nowhere else to go. So this is something that's driving the Dasanach further south. And as those Dasanach lands in Ethiopia become more developed, we would expect that there would be more Dasanach moving into Kenya and the potential for more conflict. <laughs> kama za nyingine ni, ni mahali botu mbili na botu sita zinafika huko na kuta watakosana mwingine anaanza kuja weka net juu ya nyingine sita inaanza hapa jana yao ni vita kubwa hata mpaka ya napigana wanatumia bunduki upepo utaweza kueneza vumbi linaloweza kusheheni sumu kutoka ufuko ulio sasa wazi na kuwalisha sumu watu na mashamba hata katika kaunti zilizo mbali na ziwa Many of the impacts that we're contemplating are speculative, but we do have precedents because we've seen what's happened to the Aral Sea. Bahari ya Aral, wakati mito iliyolipa maji ilipochepuliwa kutekeleza mradi wa umwagiliaji katika mashamba makubwa ya pamba nchini Uzbekistan, bahari hilo lilianza kunyauka. Ziwa Chadi liliwahi kuwa ziwa kubwa zaidi katika eneo la Sahel, lakini miaka 30 ya ongezeko la joto duniani, umeme wa nguvu za maji na miradi ya umwagiliaji yamelinyausha ziwa hili kwa zaidi ya asilimia themanini.
Tangu mechi mwaka wa 2016, kundi la vijana wa Kenya liitwalo Save Lake Turkana Movement limejaribu kuleta pamoja kila anayezijali siku za usoni za ziwa Turkana. Lake Turkana is the largest desert lake in the world and it's ours. It's Kenyan. We have an amazing heritage and we can protect it. There are 300,000 Kenyans that directly depend on Lake Turkana and we as fellow Kenyans are the only people who can speak out to protect this lake. Just because the counties of Marsabit, Turkana, Samburu have been marginalized by the authorities does not mean that we as the Kenyan public need to marginalize them as well. The people who are going to be affected have got to be identified. You can't just cut them off and expect them to look after themselves. There's got to be a process of evaluating the impacts, assessing what the costs are, determining whether there are mitigation measures that can effectively be implemented. And if there aren't, there has got to be a mechanism of compensation. Mabingwa wanasema ziwa Turkana lingali linaweza kuokolewa iwapo mashambo hayo yatawaziwa upya. Kuna njia nyinginezo za kupata nguvu za umeme ni shati ya ardhi, mafuta, upepo na nishati ya jua lakini wanaolitegemea ziwa Turkana hawana chaguo jingine. Tanyadhiri vibaya sana. Vibaya. Sina kasi nyingine ambayo nategemea ambao watoto wangu wanategemea. Sasa kama maisha yangu ni bahari na mwingine anataka kunimalizia maisha. Sio ni afadhali nikinja watoto kwanza wakufe alafu mimi hiyo shida nikute. Chungu sana. Sana sana. Ye, tutaungana kuliokuwa ziwa Turkana au tutakubali kiini cha maisha ya wakenya elfu miatatu kubadilika toka maji kuwa vumbi. Thank you.